Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. It's time for an ultimate guide on the newest 5 star character in Genshin Impact, Molani. Alright, I've already made a Constellation Zero showcase for Milani, so if you're looking for a full in-game demonstration of what a girl on an inflatable shark tube can do, go check that one out. Hint, she can do some terrible, terrible damage. Milani is the forward vape DPS character that we've been waiting for all these years for. This video was filmed on the Creator Experience server, and as with any Creator Experience server video, things are subject to change on release, so if there are any notable changes, please check the comments down below. This guide will include a detailed breakdown of her kit, best artifacts and stats, weapons, constellations, investment priority, and teams as well. We ain't got time for jokes, except for this one, I guess, so let's dive right into it. Milani's basic attacks, besides their adorably goofy animations, deal negligible damage since she's an HP scaling catalyst character and her basic attacks scale off of attack. They are useful for applying Hydro though and picking off an enemy that is barely hanging on for dear life. Her skill is the most uh, bloated part of her kit. Using her skill causes her to hop on her Sharky surfboard and enter Night Soul's Blessing. Milani's normal attacks will be converted to Sharky Bites while she's on her Sharky surfboard, which deal a bit of Hydro damage, scaling with her HP at 14.76% at level 9. Each bite has a 1.8 second cooldown, so unfortunately you can't just spam them. Bumping into an enemy marks an enemy with Marked as Prey, and gives her a Wave Momentum stack. Gaining wave momentum stacks has a 0.7 second cooldown per enemy that you bump into. And at 3 wave momentum stacks, Milani performs an enhanced sharky surging bite, which deals way more damage. At 3 stacks, it deals 1 sharky bite plus 3 wave momentum stacks plus this sharky surging bite additional damage bonus, which equals a total of 73.79% HP scaling multiplier at level 9. Both her regular Sharky Bite and 3 Wave Momentum Sharky Surging Bite count as normal attack damage. When playing with Milani, you really want to prioritize her 3 stack enhanced Sharky Surging Bites and you really want to prioritize vaping these hits, as she attacks so infrequently that it's extremely pragmatic and almost necessary for her to vape all her damage to be a strong DPS character. There's also a Night Souls points bar which intuitively indicates how long she can stay on her Sharky Surfboard. She starts with 60 Night Soul points and her passive allows her level 3 Sharky Surging Bite to spawn a goofy little pufferfish, which when eaten gives her 20 Night Soul points. She can spawn two of these puffer fishes per elemental skill, and assuming you get both puffer fish and have tight timings on her sharky surging bites, you can perform up to three sharky surging bites per skill against a single enemy. Keep in mind that Milani can swim away from the puffer fish, thus failing to grab them, leading to less sharky surging bites. Also, Milani can just sit on an enemy to repeatedly bump into them to gain wave momentum stacks. Now things get even more complicated against multiple targets. Milani can actually get more stacks much more quickly against multiple targets because each enemy has an individual 0.7 second cooldown for bumping into them. Since she can move through smaller enemies, she can effectively tag each enemy with marks for prey. Then when her Sharky Surging Bite hits a target, for each enemy not including the target hit by Sharky Surging Bite, up to 4 Shark Missiles will be launched at Marked for Prey enemies. The Bite and the Missiles do reduce damage to multiple targets, with 2 targets taking 14% less damage, and 3 or more targets taking 28% less damage. Because she can reach 3 stacks much faster against multiple targets, under ideal circumstances she's able to get 4 level 3 Sharky Surging Bites on occasion. Next, let's rattle through some additional traits of her elemental skill. Her skill has a short 6 second cooldown and the cooldown begins after she hops off her shark and swapping also cancels her skill. Because she's in night soul state and constantly consuming night soul points when she's using her skill, she activates the obsidian codex artifact sets buff. From my observations, she generates 3 to 5 hydro particles on the first bite while she's on her surfboard. Although I'm not 100% sure about this and this requires more testing, she moves faster and has decent interrupt resistance while Sharky surfboarding. Neither her Sharky bites or missiles appear to have ICD, and the missiles being projectiles can actually miss and or, or hit the wrong target. 
I've seen a target get hit by the main chomp plus two missiles that were intended for other targets, which is really interesting. There's also a limited range on her missile spawning, and Milani can't pass through many larger enemies, and with 100 night soul points, her skill lasts for roughly 9.8 seconds or so. However, dashing drains a ton more night soul points. While in Natlin, her sharky surfboarding is significantly enhanced, basically allowing her to surf for much, much longer. This combined with her other exploration passive that finds local specialties, aka essential materials, makes her an incredible exploration character for Natlin. Keep in mind though that both Kachina and Kunik also have this local material detection passive, so you don't need to pull Milani just for that. Still, her exploration capabilities are incredible for Natlin. And up next is her Elemental Burst Storm Shot. I'll have to quickly explain an entirely new mechanic, Night Soul Burst. If you have any Natlin character in your party, and if literally any character in your party deals any elemental damage, you'll see this full screen flash thing. The cooldown is shared party wide, and the cooldown for having 1, 2, and 3 Natlin characters is 18, 12, and 9 seconds respectively. Natlin characters have passives specific to this Night Soul Burst mechanic. Knowing this, Milani's burst is just a simple single hit nuke that deals more damage based on her second passive, which increases the multiplier based on the number of Night Soul bursts that have occurred. You'll generally have one to two stacks of Night Soul bursts, although in the future with three Natlin characters on the team, I can see having three stacks becoming the norm. It's not too important to maximize this passive, but it's a nice bonus to have when you have it. For her talent priority, you want to level her skill first, then her burst, and lastly her basic attacks. Alright, we've now swam over to her stats, starting with her main stats. I recommend an HP% percent or Elemental Mastery Timepiece, Hydro Goblet, and a Crit Circlet, usually being Crit Damage. Because Milani's Ascension stat is Crit Rate, and she'll want to use the Obsidian Codex Artifact set, which provides her 40% additional Crit Rate, this means that without any additional Crit Rate, she's already at 64.2% Crit Rate, hence why Crit Damage is almost always going to be her go-to choice. For the timepiece, it really depends on what weapon you're using and how much Elemental Master you're getting from your team. For example, if you're using the Ring of Yaxche, after around 120 Elemental Mastery or so, buffs from her teammates, an HP% percent timepiece is preferred. However, both will work and sometimes experimentation slash availability will be the deciding factor for your account. Her substats is the tried and true, it ain't new, crit rate, crit damage, HP percent, elemental mastery, flat HP, and some energy recharge doesn't hurt either. Speaking of energy recharge, while her burst is good, I would not prioritize energy recharge, as maximizing her chomps damage is going to be your top priority over spamming her burst. I found myself usually using her ultimate every other rotation and it worked perfectly fine. For her artifacts, it's fairly straightforward. Her best in slot option is the new four piece obsidian codex. It's a no nonsense set for her that provides her a colossal 40% crit rate and 15% bonus damage when she's in night soul state, which is most of the time. Although sometimes your burst won't have the 15% bonus damage. You should definitely be farming this for her eventually. However, if you plan to use her with Farina, which is fine for now, but her teams may not use Farina in the future, so do keep that in mind, the four piece Marichasi Hunter is a great option at around 94% of the the performance of the four piece obsidian codex. Needless to say, I don't recommend the Marriage Hossi Hunter without Furina. Next, we have the Gilded Dreams, Heart of Depth, and various two piece combinations that are all usable while you farm the obsidian codex. Funnily enough, it's worth mentioning that the four piece Cinder City is usable on her, but it'll obviously be better on a support for her than on her herself. Up next, we have her inflatable weapons. Her best free-to-play option is the new craftable catalyst, the Ring of Yaxche. This thing provides a good amount of HP% percent and 16 to 32% basic attack damage, depending on refinements, which meshes very well with her kit. You do want to target having the proper amount of HP to maximize the buff though. Another great free-to-play friendly option and my personal favorite choice is the Widsith, especially at Refinement 5. If you know me, you know that I love big numbers, and the Widsith gives you that, but just once every 30 seconds. Also, the one note buff which gives you attack is completely useless for her, so you have another added layer of RNG. 
Fortunately, there is a retry button in Abyss, so it's not as painful as it could be. With the proper two-note buff, the Witsith will outperform even her signature weapon, at least for those 10 seconds. But without any buffs, which is unfortunately the majority of the time, it is very lackluster. Still, the big numbers to me are worth it, so I'll be using the Witsith on my Molani quite often. And I almost forgot to include this option, but fortunately remember just in time, it's the Mappa Mare. The craftable Mappa Mare is quite good because Molani should always be vaping. In a cut down on its ramp up time, you can actually use a normal attack right Right before hopping onto her skill to trigger a vape as long as you have enough pyro application for that. Honestly, if you had this thing at Refinement 5 and want to save on billets, it is worth considering just using the Map of Mare over the Ring of Yaxche. But if you do have the resources, I personally think the Ring of Yaxche is still worth it due to how no-nonsense it is. And I'm glad we finally got another crossover that isn't Aloy in Genshin Impact, in the form of Milani getting a signature W engine. This W engine that looks straight from Zenless Zone Zero is her best and most consistent option, leading to around a 28% increase in damage over the free-to-play friendly Ring of Yaxche. Not only that, but it looks dastardly cute. Other solid options include the Thousand Floating Dreams, which I was surprised by its performance in my damage maximizer. Then after that, we have the Tome of the Eternal Flow. And finally, the Battle Pass Weapon Sacrificial Jade is another usable option. Although you do have to keep in mind that its five second off field requirement can feel a bit clunky. And also my chart is overestimating its performance here since it loses the buff for the burst. But oh well. And also keep in mind that for the Sacrificial Jade, yes, there's a lot of disclaimers for the Sacrificial Jade, that you will be at 100% crit rate with this weapon without any crit subs that rolls, and thus making it difficult to actually build your artifacts sometimes. Honestly, this artifact set might actually calculate better with the Gilded Dreams, but alas, I'm a bit too lazy for that, so I'm sorry about that. So this is a solid option if you have some refinements on it. Finally, all the other options are either worse than the Ring of Yaxche or have their own issues like over crit. So if you're a beginner, don't have the Widsith, and haven't gotten the Ring of Yaxche, you can use the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers, honestly, at least for the interim, which provides HP% while you farm for the aforementioned catalysts. We've made it to the section with terrible viewer retention, so here's a dancing shark gif to keep you from skipping the constellations and investment priority section. Her constellation 1 provides 66% additional HP% percent scaling multiplier to the first chomp used during her skill. This is actually a massive increase and even significantly bumps up her full rotation damage. Her constellation 2, while I haven't tested it yet, in theory probably gives her an additional chomp in the same time it took her to do the 3 chomps without constellation 2, or at least that's what I'll be assuming for these calcs. Another great constellation. Of course we'll need some testing to confirm this, so yeah this is just theory crafting. Constellation 3 gives 3 levels to her chomping power, which is nice, and constellation 4 gives her some energy as well as 75% burst damage, which I'm assuming to be bonus damage here. Constellation 5 gives 3 levels to her burst, and finally Constellation 6 makes it so her Constellation 1 is always active for every chomp during her Sharky Surf boarding. By Constellation 6, she'll be doing roughly 2.4 times the damage a Constellation 0 Milani, and by C6R5, around 3 times that of a C0R1 Milani. For investment priority though, I think both her Constellation 1 and Refinement 1 are good. This is honestly up to preference, but if you can't craft 5 Ring of Yaxche or dislike the Witsith, Refinement 1 is great for consistent performance. It's also cool to own the first W engine in Genshin Impact. I though personally prefer her Constellation 1 though, as you can get some hilarious large numbers with the Widsith, and it also puts you closer to Constellation 2, which looks to be an incredible constellation. Phew, let's move on to the teams section. Now this will be one of the most outdated sections likely in just a few patches, or at least I hope so because their current compatibility with the current roster is clunky at best. So please take this section with a grain of salt, and we're also going to just need more testing even with the current roster. My personal favorite fish to play team though is Milani, Shengling, Kachina, and a flexible fourth slot, usually being Sucrose, Kazuha, or even Jean for Viridescent Venera Swirl and Damage Amplification, or even Barbara for Hydro Resonance and Healing. Because you're running Kachina, you can equip the Cinder City on Kachina, thus providing her that very powerful 40% Hydro damage. 
This also allows you to run Archaic Petra on Xiangling for another 35% Hydro damage since Kachina generates a Hydro Geo Crystallize, which Xiangling can then pick up. Now, unfortunately, the rotations are a bit strict and a bit awkward, but such is the case for most vape teams, and perhaps in the future, this will improve depending on what characters are released. It is important to note that the Viridescent Veneer will wear off generally after the second chomp, which foreshadows the lack of its compatibility with Mulani in general, and perhaps will get a better buffer that is reliant on the viridescent veneer for Milani in the future. It's also worth noting that you can substitute, for example, Kachina or Sucrose, Kazu, etc. with Mona, who can give you a big nuke damage number. But again, Mona's omen only lasts for a few seconds, so do keep that in mind. Another useful team in the interim while we wait for more Natlin characters is the Burning Shark team, consisting of Milani, Emily, a pyro character like Dea, and a fourth flexible slot, often being Nahida or Baiju. This team is hot because, well, it's burning, and also because it's energy energy free and doesn't require anyone's burst to function. You can also run a rockfish team with Milani, a pyro character, and two geo characters like Zhongli, Kachina, Albedo, or Chiori. This is pretty self-explanatory. Speaking of pyro characters, by far my favorite pyro applier for Milani to vape is Xiangling, since she applies Hydro in a large AoE that also follows you. Although I did find Dea to be usable for this role as well, especially against a single target. Toma and Xinyan have been floated around as options, but I personally didn't like them when I tried them, but I can see them work Working and it could just be a skill issue on my part. And the last team I wanted to highlight is a fabulous fishy Farina team performing with Mulani, Xiangling, Farina, and Baizu, or another full party healer. You're very likely to drop some forward vapes here and there, but this is still a solid, usable, great team regardless. As we can see, Mulani is an incredible forward vape DPS character with so much room to grow. And this is all while she's half-baked, clearly without a full functional team. In particular, I think Milani is missing a buffer and a pyro applier. While Xiangling is the best option at the moment, Xiangling has severe energy issues among some other issues. And as for buffers, Viridus and Veneer's short 8 second durations just isn't that great with Milani as it drops midway through her rotation and Milani can't swap off and swap back on to reapply Viridus and Veneer. Even with these issues, Milani is still a very powerful forward vape DPS character. Now, I do want to mention that Milani does feel quite clunky to play at times, as I often struggle to get three full sharky surging bites off in a rotation, which leads to a colossal loss of damage. And this problem will likely be even more severe on mobile, where it's harder to control her to bump into enemies. Anyway, let me know what you think about Milani, and if I missed anything down in the comments below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.